Do you know how audacious I had to be to think that I could go from a salary of 26 and a half to 73,000 in one jump? It wasn't delusion. Smiling at people in London, especially if you're on the tube, might be one of the most audacious things you could ever do. But that shocking element, it keeps coming back to what people say you should do versus what you're going to do. That's a really interesting evolution of audacity, I think, where you just become that person and it's no longer a move that people no longer expect from you, but it is just who you are. Hey, what's up? I'm Adam. If you're new here and if you're returning, then you know what's good. I was on TikTok the other day and I came across this video where this girl was talking about the audacity and people who have the audacity and what they're able to achieve in life. And it was a very short video, but it sparked something in me because I think a lot of us, this is partly the missing bit, the puzzle, right? Like why we have everything else, the skill, the knowledge, all this stuff, but we don't actually get what we want in life, whether it be the relationships we want, whether it be the opportunities, the business opportunities, career opportunities, is because we don't have the audacity to take the next step. I see a lot of talk about delusion and delulu online and I can't really resonate with it as much. I think really audacity is the evolution of this where delusion is more like thoughts, right? Like I can think that something's possible. When we describe audacious people, they've taken a bold step typically that the rest of the world are like, ooh, like, okay, you're just gonna do that, right? If you've ever been approached by somebody, or, you know, <laughs> on the street or something like that, or you see someone take an opportunity and you're like, the audacity of that person. And sometimes it's a positive like, oh, and sometimes we're like, and there's reasons behind that I think that we'll get into later. But at the crux of all of this is this idea that the most successful people in life are often also the most audacious. And I wanna get into unpacking that a little bit, but also how we can live a more audacious life to get what we want. Okay, so let's start by actually breaking down what audacity is because I think people have different ideas about it. But when I was looking at the definition, one of the ones that stuck out to me was this bold willingness to take risks. I think at like the heart of somebody who is audacious is boldness, right? This ability, despite what everyone else might think, to take an opportunity or to try something. And I think one of the really interesting things in the definition was disregard for conventional thought or other restrictions. Like this idea that despite what the rest of the world is saying that you should do or that you should be ready for, you're gonna do it anyway. Another really interesting definition that I came across and I think it all ties in together is a courage or a confidence that other people find shocking and sometimes rude. Um, but that shocking element, it keeps coming back to what people say you should do versus what you're going to do. An interesting point that I wanted to touch on when it comes to audacity is the differences sometimes between men and women and how men are typically, but not always because nothing is absolute, more audacious than women and that study that typically shows this is the one between men and women when they're applying for jobs men will typically apply for jobs when they meet 60% of the requirements according to this study and I will leave it in the link below that's what it found whereas women will typically only apply if they meet 100 often between 90 and 100 percent of the requirements right that they want to be perfect before they take the next step and I think this is something that a lot of people will kind of resonate with and a lot of women will resonate with this. I don't want to do it until I'm 100% perfect. But to apply for a job and you're only 60% of the requirements are met, that's quite an audacious step. That's saying that, you know, I know I have some of this stuff, but I back myself enough to know that the rest I can just, I sort it out. Like, do you know what I mean? And I think that way of life is very beneficial, especially if you do have some of the requirements, some of the backing already. Why not go for it? Okay, so if that's how we're defining audacity, then how does one live a more audacious life? One that is, you know, filled with more bold risk-taking, you know, with more of a disregard for people's thoughts and opinions and conventional ideas about what you can and shouldn't do. Well, the first thing I wanna talk about is getting out of your own way. And the reason is because in order to be audacious, you have to be less susceptible to those intrusive thoughts. Those thoughts that are gonna tell you that you can't do this and you can't do that and you're not ready for this and you're not 100% ready for that. So. We need to get that out. And one thing I've started doing is something called Morning Pages because I've been reading the book The Artist's Way. And Morning Pages is all about, I guess it's like journaling, but there's no real aim to it other than to just get the thoughts in your head on paper. It's like a stream of consciousness. You don't go back and reflect. It's not supposed to be, you know, enlightening or any. It's just whatever's in your head in the morning, you wake up and you write three pages on paper and then you just don't look at it. You close it and you get on with your day. And that kind of like brain dump in the morning, I've been finding really, really useful. As somebody who struggles with journaling, this felt different for some reason. This just, there's no aim, there's no goal. We're not trying to know, you know, look at back and this, that and Freudian and you know, where are all your feelings? No, it's none of that. 
There is a time and a place for that sort of reflection. But if in the morning you can get that out and free your mind up, even a little bit, just to take those steps, just to make those moves. Now, this is just the way that I've been doing it with morning pages and a lot of people have had success with these. But whatever method that you have, but in the morning is really important because it dictates how the rest of your day is going to go. And so if you can offload that stuff in the morning and allow yourself to show up in fullness, you know, show your audacious self, it's a good starting point. The next thing is actually about opening your mouth and asking for things. It seems so simple, but the most audacious people in life are those that dare to ask for things. You know the idea that closed mouths don't get fed and it's so true. We have this fear, a lot of us, of just asking when really most of the case, the worst case scenario is the person says no, or you know, the company says no, or the business says no. A prime example of this is those people who stay in jobs for like 20 years, right? And they never get a promotion really or pay rise. And then somebody else comes in, sometimes with less experience than them, and gets a pay rise or a promotion within a matter of months or a couple of years. But usually it's because they have the audacity to ask for it. They have the chest to show up and ask for it. And this is why opening your mouth and asking for things is such a fundamental part of being audacious. Even if you don't, again, meet all of the requirements for whatever it is, you have enough and you back yourself the rest to go for it. Do you know how audacious I had to be to think that I could go from a salary of 26 and a half to 73,000 in one jump? It wasn't delusion in the sense that I was completely incapable of doing the work of this new job, right, in this new company. However, I did have to defy or disregard the convention about, you know, the next step and, you know, career progression and, you know, how your salary should incrementally increase. I disregarded that and thought, you know what, I'm, I'm good for this. There are some things on this that I know and the rest of the stuff I can work with. I back myself enough again to know that I can acquire that knowledge, those skills on the job and I'll show up for the rest of it. That was almost a 50K jump and I did get it. And if I hadn't, if I hadn't backed myself, if I hadn't been audacious enough to think that I could go for this, I'd still probably be back in that particular salary range. On the contrary, there are a lot of examples in my life where I didn't ask for things and I think I missed out on a lot. And I think you probably are thinking the same thing of all the times when you sat thinking, I should have asked for that. Or you've seen somebody else go for something, you're like, yeah, that could have been my opportunity, but I didn't open my mouth. Your path to a more audacious life requires that you're going to ask questions. Another example that falls under this, and it may be a little bit more controversial, is actually Trump. Whether you like him or not, do you know how audacious you have to be to have no real political background or anything like that? No real experience in the Senate or anything like that, and then decide that I'm gonna ask the American people to vote me in as president. I, I, I'm, gonna make, I'm gonna make this work. I back myself enough and think that I have enough knowledge in all other areas that, yeah, I'm gonna ask for this. And he did get it, right? And there are a lot of people who think that they could have done a job like that. People who are saying, I could have done that. I could have been better than him, but you didn't open your mouth and you didn't go for it. And I'm, again, nothing is a simple black and white picture, but the first step, one of the biggest steps in getting somewhere that other people won't, you know, achieving things that other people can't or won't, is in asking. Following on from that, in terms of living your more audacious life, you have to accept that everyone starts from somewhere, right? And I keep going back to this, but being audacious is not about being perfect. It is literally about acting despite being perfect. Because if I knew that I could achieve everything and, you know, I had everything, you know, solved, it wouldn't really be an audacious move at that point, would it? I would just be executing on something that I have complete evidence almost that I could do. But being audacious is about, I have some things and I'm gonna make the rest work. And then the prime example of this is in my first tech job, right? I had been in tech for all of about a, a couple of months and I had a background in geography, so I didn't even really have high technical knowledge. And I went to my manager, he put forward this project where there's gonna be a migration from one really big tool to another one and it was very time sensitive. If we didn't get it done in time, we'd have to fork out a few hundred thousand to, to get a new license. I said that I put my hand up and was like, hi manager, I'd like to put myself forward for this. That was a very audacious move. I did not have anywhere close to the amount of technical skills needed to execute this and be the second lead engineer on this role, right? I, I just didn't have it. By every external metric, I should not have been putting my hand up for this particular task, for this particular project, and yet I did, and, and I was awarded it. And I think, again, when people see you back yourself and understand that, I know that someone has to start from somewhere, like everyone has to start from somewhere, that includes me, and so I'm putting myself to start now. Um, and it was a, a phenomenal move for me in my career because I think it really impacted how people saw me in that workplace and my confidence is really like a self-fulfilling prophecy, which we'll go into later. 
The next thing is more about the power of compounding. You may be sitting here thinking, I'm not really an audacious person. I don't have the capacity to be an audacious person and show up like that. But the reality is that almost all of us, if not all of us, have the ability to take on this element in life. But instead of focusing on one big leap where you go from like being not very audacious to you know the boldest person ever, leverage the power of compounding like all good investors. That means small incremental steps that over time compound to get you to where you're trying to be. And often the curve will look more like this. Small consistent steps is far more effective than doing nothing and hoping all this magic is gonna occur that's gonna take you from point A to point B. Right? And the thing about audacious people is a lot of it is to do with communication, typically about asking for things, like we said, going for things, seeing an opportunity and you know making good on it. And this is why I think the social aspect of your life is really important. And why small steps such as you know smiling at people, talking to people in the supermarket, you know, striking up conversation at networking events, you can see how it can progress. Smiling at people in London, especially if you're on the tube, might be one of the most audacious things you could ever do. Like people will look at you like, what are you? Me? Audacious or crazy, at that point, who knows? But the point is, you make small changes, small steps towards the ultimate goal that you're trying to achieve and you enjoy and take notes and understanding from each part of the process. And you see yourself start to form and transform into a version of yourself that is willing to go for more and willing to back yourself more. But it doesn't stop there. And this is where this idea of audacity and tenacity come in play for me. Because it's not enough to just be an audacious person, but you have to be a tenacious person. This idea that just saying things or even believing things is not enough if you're not putting the work in. And this is where people who are audacious enough to take the step but don't make good on it, we're typically thinking of them like, mm. Those people don't typically garner respect. It's the people who are audacious enough to go for things for art and ask for things and then make good on them because they are tenacious enough to keep working. Uh, they are diligent enough to make sure that they are competent or that they can become competent. Those are the people that we respect the most and the positive audacious people. Audacity is asking for the opportunity, tenacity is making good on it. And it's one hell of a reinforcing combination, right? Because, you know, you, you take the step and then you make good on it and you're like, well, I'm gonna take another bigger step. And then you know that well, like, last time I was able to make it, and it becomes like a cycle that is like self-fulfilling effectively and can lead to really, really great things happening in life. And the really interesting thing about this combination is those who execute this over time consistently, we actually stop seeing them as audacious. They just become the person. Like think about Beyonce, perhaps the first time she did something crazy on stage or a crazy performance, people might have thought, oh, that's a very audacious move. Like, okay, we're just gonna do that. That, that defies kind of convention and what you're supposed to be doing. Now it's an expectation. I don't, no one thinks about her as an audacious individual. Or most people don't. We just see as, we expect it. We expect her to be pushing boundaries and doing new things. And that's a really interesting evolution of audacity, I think, where you just become that person and it's no longer a move that people no longer expect from you, but it is just who you are. Okay, so that's it. I just wanted to share some of these thoughts I had on being audacious and living a more audacious life because it's a really interesting concept and one that I hadn't really thought about, or well, not in this kind of framing until I saw that video. So thank you to whoever did that. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Like I, I really like unpacking ideas and even words and how they affect the way that we just go through life in effect. So I'll see you in the next one.